you, Cunningham? You're not mad, are you? This time, our fearless crew attempts to follow Cousin Dougie as he tears down the engine for the Phoenix Cuda. But will they be able to keep track of him? Or will he have our producer saying, Doug on it, where is he? But that's not all. Justin makes progress in assembly on our Blue Beasts, the 1970 Challenger RT and the 1969 GTX. The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back, coming back, coming back to life. Self-proclaimed Mopar master Mark Warman and his protege painter Will Scott get paid to bring Mopar muscle cars back from the dead. They work with Mark's daughter Alyssa and his cousin Dougie. They're willing to travel anywhere to retrieve a customer's car, detailing how it lived its life and how it died. After that, they bring it back to make it look just like it did the day it was born. Good morning. Brother Doug. Hey, brother. Jeffrey, what's going on? I got your mic for you. My mic? Yeah. What am I doing today? I don't know. What's going on? This is uh, Follow Doug Day. Follow Doug Day. Orders Follow from the producers. Oh, yeah. no. What do I have to do now? Well, what are you going to do? I mean, what am I supposed to do today? Yeah. In the way of work? Yeah. Well, I have a Phoenix engine to tear down today. OK. Uh-huh. And we have a bunch of car parts we have to put away. That is what it is. All right. Are you going to follow me around all day today? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Meanwhile, in the assembly shop, Justin is installing the pistol grip shifter in the B7 Blue 1970 Challenger RT. holes not lining up super well Uh, the only thing I need to put in is just the, just the clutch push rod. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the rod in. Get my retaining clips on there. This so this is your clutch pedal. This is your clutch rod, so that'll relay down and push your clutch in. All right, she's in. Okay, I can't find Doug anywhere. I've been looking over the entire shop for him. I the best place I can think of is to check the graveyard, but it's raining, so I don't even know why I'd be out here. What the producer doesn't know is Dougie has been avoiding him as much as possible, and he's enlisted Ezra to help him organize parts in the storage units. Meanwhile, Justin finishes up installing the rear taillights in our 1969 GTX. I did already go through and I put our uh, gaskets in here and then there's another gasket that lies 
right under the lens to the uh, taillight housing. Already got those prepped because I did a pre-fit. So go ahead and get these ones on the, on the car. These aren't really difficult to put on. It's just you really have to be careful with how tight you make everything because you really do not want to break off those studs. All right, so now that I got the taillight set into place, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the mounting stud uh, protectors right on it. And these, they just slip right over the, the studs. Four on each side. Now I can go ahead really quick, put my lights in. They just click right into the housings. Snap into place right there. Make sure your wire's tied down. Got the lights hooked up. Now I can go ahead and put our trunk light wiring harness in there. The trunk light option is really cool. Um, it's always kind of cool to come across a car that has that. Um, so this mounts right here. And what it does is, when the trunk is um, closed, it pushes this down, and so you lose this connection between here. And when the trunk opens up, it makes a connection and causes that light to turn on. So I'll go ahead, I'll mount this first. So yeah, this this right here, when when the, the deck lid closes, that uh, makes connection right here on this protrusion, and it pushes this down when the trunk closes. Uh, this is actually an original wiring harness um, we got from Tony's Parts. So this piece of the wiring harness is going to be routed through into the cab of the car. This is the the light socket itself. Sometimes when people are restoring a car, what they'll do is they don't want to take the time to just pull this thing off, so they actually just cut the wires, they leave this on there, and it ends up getting painted if somebody else does a restoration. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you keep this thing intact, take it off the car, and so you can have it for later. So you don't have to have a butchered up harness and have to put that one back in. So let's go ahead and mount this right here. Pull that through and just put in your wire retainer clips and you're good to go. All right, now that I got the trunk light in there, uh, we need something to protect the trunk floor. So we got the trunk mat lining that we can put in here. So I'll go and grab that and put it in. All right. Doug? What? Oh, there you guys are. Oh, well, hi, Matthew. What are you guys How's it doing? going? What are we doing? We're putting all these car parts away that Mark told us to put inside this little tiny pod. And this isn't everything either. There's still more stuff. So yeah, we're just out here enjoying this beautiful, sunny Oregon day, right? What do you need, Matthew? Keep going. Oh, keep going? All right. Okay. Let's wheel that baby in there and put all that stuff away. Does this go in there? Everything goes in. Well, yeah, that can go right in the corner. Oh. Stab the fin, hope you don't mind. Was that a nope? No, I said stab the fin, hope you don't mind. I don't know where you want any of this stuff, though. Nice. Most of the stuff's junk.
All right, it's always good to set these things out um, about an hour or so before you do it. it. Let's it relax a little bit because it's been rolled up and put in a box. It's really nice. They make these cutouts for us. You just tear it out. Get it to lay down in place. And it'll, it'll relax even more the longer it's sitting in here. All right, got that in. Now I can go ahead and put the trunk uh, trim panel on here. That'll really set the back end of this car off. This you wanna be really careful of. They got the studs right here. They're fresh. This metal's pretty soft, so you just wanna make sure you don't put too much tension on them. Uh, I mean, enough, because this is a pretty heavy piece, but these will break off and they will strip out very easy with those quick nuts. Just gotta be careful and line up your holes. Don't wanna scratch that paint. Get that in there. Start with the one. Don't go all the way tight yet. You wanna take each of these and bring each of them, or tighten each one slowly as you go. It'll help even out that pressure. All right, I got two more on this side. Alrighty, got those tightened up, even pressure all the way across. Last thing now that we can put on is our, our Plymouth emblem. Those are held on just with the speed nuts as well. Go ahead, do the same thing with this. Gotta set that into place. have to be careful when you're cutting your threads on these fresh posts. If you feel any resistance, um, just be careful because you don't want to snap that stud off. That's that. Shut the trunk. That looks good. Looks like a completely different car. How's that look? Looks great. Oh my God, are you serious? What you got there, man? I, why would this be in here? <laughs> Jeffrey, okay. did you do this? You see Jeffrey, give him that arm. Gotcha. Okay. For now, we'll just, uh, we'll hook it in the back there. Coming up, the engine for the mythic Phoenix Cuda is torn down and gone over in painstaking detail. Equally painstaking, our fearless producer and crew follow Cousin Dougie to discover the secret of just what it is he does all dug on day. Okay, I got it all cleaned up. Now what am I gonna do? Nineteen seventy one was the year that Barracuda, like this one awaiting its own restoration, had the following important advantages over the popular Mustang. It was an economy two door coupe that's considerably discounted, had more interior roominess in the front and rear, allowing ease for drivers and passengers. It had more selective engine choices from rock bottom economy up to all out performance. Additionally, Barracuda had 52% more brake lining area, more functional instrument panels, and 
optional full-body side protective moldings that ran the entire length of the car. In 1971, the name Mustang was not enough when you stacked up the features of the Barracuda, making it our Corpse of the Week. So right now, Doug's getting the Aladdin fired up. That's our pressure washer that we use for steam clean and everything. We've got the engine and drivetrain out for the 1971 Cuda. This is the Phoenix Cuda. We wanted to be able to get the engine and everything in process. So what we're doing right now is I've got Doug set up to go ahead and clean it. We want to steam clean it for two reasons. One, it's filthy and nobody wants to work on something with briquettes. And two is there may be assembly line markings. This was a pretty original old car when it got burnt. So we're gonna be looking for any evidence of original assembly line markings. All Hemi Cudas were built at Hamtramck. So this will be a Hamtramck car. And we just wanna see if there's anything in there that maybe Dave Weiss hasn't caught over the years or I haven't caught. That's how you continue to grow the books that are out there and, and learn more about the cars for the people down the road, the youngsters, young whippersnappers. <clears throat> Dougie, how you doing there? I'm doing good. You got it? Uh-huh. Why don't you grab that wand in your hand? Okay. Hey, Doug, how many 1971 Hemi Cuda automatics were built? With a hard top? With a hard top, good question. Very good, very good. 250? No, no, 48. 48? Yeah, just remember, it's the same IQ as Will. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to remember. Okay, Okay. 48. So, that's pretty rare, huh? 48's pretty rare, that's yeah. right. How many states were there in 1971? 50. That's right. So two less than the number of states in the country. 48? How many planets were there when you was up there? Three. Yeah. Well, it's grown a lot, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This piston right here is what got this car parked. The reason it was dead in the water in the garage was because he had a clunking sound coming out of his uh, engine, and when he took the head off, that's what he discovered, it sucked a valve. So anyway, had that not happened, there's a chance it might not have been in the garage. I still think it would have been because that's where he stored it at. But it's interesting how one thing can lead to another, like that Final Destination. You ever see Final Destination? About yeah. that group of events that happens? Uh-huh. Like one little thing, you change one little nuance. Like, let's say I pull that spark plug wire off right now, right? It but it's not supposed to be pulled off. I've just changed history. Now, you're steam cleaning along, and you catch this uh -huh. with the end of your nozzle. The wand flips out of your hand. It blows your right eyeball out through the right-hand side of your ear, and then you spend the rest of your life reading everything with Braille, right? All because I unplugged that spark plug wire. That one wire. Yep. You can't cheat death. Death will find you. Yeah, that's true. Almost fell over that brick. Oh, That's I'm... all because of this. That... That's all because of that. You can't change history. Maybe it's our feet. Or it could be that. Watch your step. I'll, tr I'll try to do the same. Show me everything. How about I'm a little told that I have a nervous disorder about clapping. How about a little degreaser? That's all citrus based in case anybody's wondering. Yes it is. Oh, natural. Uh-huh. And we have our tarp down there to catch anything that comes off. Not easy being green. No, it's not. Name of the movie? Green Mile? No. No, no, The Expendables. Oh, I didn't see that one. You didn't see The Expendables? No, is that a Disney? No, that's a Stallone. S Stallone? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Which goes back to my original theory, if they would have just fed Stallone when he asked for a diner in the original First Blood, I got the shirt that says it, all he wanted was something to eat. He was hungry? They could have avoided it all. If the, if the cop, Stallone asked him for something to eat. He says, you got somewhere I can eat? Yeah, about 50 miles up the highway. And that's when Stallone says, well, I didn't me. I didn't do that. <laughs> right? And they get in that big fight. If all that could have been avoided by saying, sure, there's a Denny's right there. Go in and have a Grand Slam breakfast. All of it could have been avoided. Now there's thousands of dead people, a town's blown up, Rambo's in jail. God. Colonel Troutman wouldn't have all those great one-liners, like what you call hell, he calls home. If you send that many men in there, don't forget one thing. A good food. supply of body bags. Don't forget the food, right? Doug, you've ruined my punchline. Why are you doing that? What did I do? I'm gonna let you steam clean. Enjoy yourself. Oh. If you're looking for me, I'll be inside yeah. insulting people.
heavy old girl, even though she's only half there. Okay, I'll blow her off a little bit. Okay, I got it all cleaned up. Now what am I gonna do? I don't even think I wanna touch this thing. Oh, it's lunch time. I'm out of here. Doug, what? you're just gonna leave in the middle of a shoot? It's lunch time, I gotta go. Mark's probably looking for me. Okay, thanks, Doug. Yeah, okay, well, cut. In 1971, Mustang's front-end treatment was nothing particularly new. Barracuda featured dual headlights, an all-new grill with the iconic six-scoop-styled openings that peak in the center, and deeper bumper protection. How many colors were available for the 1971 Cuda grill? Six, nine, eight. Think you know? Find out after the break. Welcome back, ghouls. We learned that the 1971 Barracuda featured dual headlights, an all-new grill with the iconic six-scoop-styled openings that peaked in the center, and deep bumper protection. And now we've asked how many colors were available for the 1971 Cuda Grill. If you answered nine, you were right. Okay, so Doug should be back from lunch anytime now. Okay. Speak of the devil. No, you can't hide. What? You gotta come back. Oh, hi, Matthew. <laughs> you walked out on us earlier. I did? Well, it was lunchtime. Boy, I got a full belly now. <laughs> um, this motor is the next thing we have to do? Yeah, I gotta get you back mic'd up. Oh, man. Microphones again? Sorry, Doug. That's okay, Matthew. Oh, boy. Oh. Slave driver, you're just gonna push me and push me, aren't you? Well, I guess this engine's not gonna take itself apart. Maybe I could get some help on this one. Let's see if my good buddy Ezra will help me take this apart today. Ugh. You ready, Ezra? Ready as I'll ever be. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. I guess it's time to take this uh, Phoenix engine apart finally. Yeah, I got away from it for long enough, I guess. So Ezra's gonna help me and we're gonna Yes, sir. We're gonna take this thing apart. I have no idea how this is gonna go. I don't think it's gonna be easy. I'll keep my fingers crossed like I always do. <laughs> go ahead and pull the spark plugs out. I'll clean off all the debris. got a head start on it. One of the heads is already off the engine. This actually don't look too bad. The plugs? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, amazingly clean. Watch out for water in there. Nice. Okay. Yeah. That one, that first plug I pulled actually looked the best though. They got worse after that, huh? Yep. Rusty? Crusty? Only. <clears throat> hey man. Came loose, huh? This line's in the way here. Oh yeah. So, uh, hold on a second, hold on. Cut it. Try it now. Got it? Sweet. Oh, Woo. heavens. Oh, beauty. It's like the Titanic in there, doesn't it? Beautiful. Oh my God, that is horrible. I didn't clean it good enough. Maybe you should have cleaned it after the heads came off. Yeah, okay. You know my 
friend's Dodge just blew its head gasket on his flatbed truck and he pulled his push rods out for his Cummins and one of them was bent like an S. Yeah, that thought, happens. It, thought it was pretty funny. Over revving, huh? Yeah, he was going 80 when it blew. Okay, see if you can find a socket that fits the head bolts right there. Breaker bar. Where's the huge breaker bar at? Probably won't need that. Unless you're weak, bro. See how tight they are. Because I'm trying to get these head bolts off in here and they are tight. Ooh, not really. That's pretty loose, actually. Oh. Is there a sequence? No. Just pull them off? Yeah. <clears throat> Oh my God. Wow. These are tight over here. Oh my God. It's not even just flaky rust, it's like paste. Yeah. When's the last time you pulled apart a 426 Hemi? Never. I actually never pulled apart this specific engine. When was the last time you did one, Doug? It's been a while. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. There's a series of studs that go through the head that are bolted on from underneath the head. Very unique to the hammer. None of the other engines have that. So, those things were tight. Just removing the, the four fasteners that are inside to hold the head down from inside the valley here. Smells great. Doesn't that smell great? Oh yeah. Smells amazing, dude. Burned oil. Woo! Favorite smell. I don't think I've ever dealt with this much rust. Actually, this is bad. Yeah, this is bad. And it does smell bad, too. Not the greatest, but not the worst thing I've smelled. That's true. Sure. Okay. That's all the head bolts? Yep. So, Mark says if I unplug this wire right here, it's gonna change the entire universe. Do it. Unplug the wire? Yeah. Okay. Coil wire? Do you feel anything? No. No change? Lies. <laughs> Lies. Okay. Excellent. That's all you, bro. It's all me. Here we go. In the trash. I didn't feel anything. Stay tuned. There's more to come as Cousin Dougie and Ezra completely dissect and discuss the Hemi in the mythic Phoenix Cuda. That fan's in pretty good shape, huh? Yeah. Just need some paint. With all the melted stuff on it. But will Cousin Dougie's protege outshine him? Or is Dougie better than Ezra? I bet we can rebuild that. We probably won't, though. Man, you're slacking. Okay, go ahead and pull that nut off that lower control arm. Rusty crusty, huh? Yep. We're trying to get this lower control arm off here so that we can get the steering box off and the exhaust manifold and the head. It's all tied together. Got it. It's kind of like an octopus. <laughs> An octopus is yeah, not with all the, its hands tied together. Not right? the analogy I would have used. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to hear yours. <laughs> so what I'm doing right now is trying to drive this roll pin out of the end of this strut rod so I can get the nut off that holds the strut rod to the lower control arm. Okay, Let's see if I can get the other end loose. This side's good. I got lucky. Okay. I got the lower control arm off. Hammer? Yes, sir. Gotta get the other one off, dude. Hammer. You're gonna pull the fan off? Yeah. I guess I'll work on the distributor here, see if we can get the distributor out. You ever seen any of these cool tools? Yeah. Ratcheting open end wrench? Ratcheting open end wrench. One of its ears is broken off, it's got a little hook, and it works like a ratchet, a ratcheting wrench. I can use it on this uh, distributor hold down bolt right here. You just 
back and forth. That's pretty cool, huh, Ezra? Yeah. yeah. Nice. That fan's in pretty good shape, huh? Yeah. Just need some paint. Put all the melted stuff on it. <laughs> the shroud, huh? Yeah. We can pull the power steering off. Okay. So how's that? 9 16 Not half inch, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I get you every time, don't I? Well, I'm not good with Try that one. I'm not as good with fractional as I am with metric. All I was ever trained at my last job was metric, so. What'd you work on? Everything. Mostly 10 millimeter Toyotas. You can take almost anything off of an Asian car with a 10 millimeter socket. We were trained both ways back in school. Look at that. Nice. It's got a nice cooler on it. Oh, it's leaking water. Look at that. Oh, is it? <laughs> it's pouring water out. Nice. What do you think about this hose? You think we can get this burned hose off here? Uh, probably not. Well, I mean, we will, but I'm gonna put some everything's more. difficult oh, when rust is involved. Yeah. I think this distributor's gonna be a pain, right? I'm gonna spray a little bit. Distributor? Yeah. Distributor. In hopes that it ever comes loose. I'm gonna get a special hammer and tap on that distributor for a little while. Two more. Man. I know what you're thinking, Ezra. Oh, you do? Yeah. You probably don't. Just cut it, <laughs> just cut it. Just Tear cut it. Tear it off, right? Cutting's easy. Sawzall. Sawzall solves everything. Now Can you believe that? This. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. No. Honestly not. It just came out. Oh, happy day. I know that. That is awesome. I can't believe that that thing came out of there. In 1971, Mustang only offered three engine options, but Mustang didn't come close to matching Barracuda's 446 barrel or the unbeatable Hemi. True or false, if you were on a tight budget, Barracuda's 225 engine output the same amount of horsepower as Mustang's 250. Think you know? Find out after the break. All right, ghouls, we've been taking a look at the differences between Mustangs and Barracudas in 1971. And now we've made the claim that the entry-level 250 and 71 Mustangs output the same amount of horsepower as Barracuda's upgraded 225 economy option. Were we telling the truth? Yes. Both engines output 145 horsepower. We get these two screws out of yeah, here. Yeah, it was just if that one came out, it would have come out easier, but yeah. I guess we can get the whole bracket off. There we go. Get that belt out of there. There we go. There goes another pulley. Got our alternator off in one piece. I'll bet we can rebuild that. We probably won't though. We'll get a new one. That's a good looking pulley. We can reuse this. Yeah. That'll clean up. Got a bunch of gunk on this belt here. Got some good paint left on it. Okay, I'm digging off a little bit of melted debris off the fasteners on the water pump. There's more on more. Got our fuel pump. And our fuel filter. Rusted on. Our line to the dual four carburetors. It's good reference. So we'll know how to put it back together again. Got it. There we go. Oh, sweet. Good job. One very rusty, crusty water pump, huh? Pour water everywhere, maybe? Yeah. Oh! Rust, it wasn't even fluid, it was just rust chunks. <laughs> awesome. Got the lower pulley off. Two pulleys in one. Yeah, pulleys is smaller than the other one. Definitely. Look how clean it is inside. Still shiny. That's amazing. After all these years, that thing hasn't even rusted. All right, the nut came off easy enough. Yeah. If you could get this bolt out, drop this idler arm down, I'm gonna unbolt the steering box, and uh, then we can get at the exhaust manifold. 
came out, no pliers needed. Nice, okay. So I'm gonna get these uh, there we go. out. Took us a long time to get to this point, didn't it? Yeah. Looks impossible for a while. Okay, Ezra. Got it open. Wish us luck here, buddy. To myself? Both of us. Okay. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We did it. There we go. We did it. Oh, oh and look at that, it's everywhere. leaking oil. That's okay. Let's put it up here on the table. And let it leak. All over the spark plugs. Perfect. Yeah, they need oil. Hey, yeah. Look at that. We finally found the exhaust manifold. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Did you spray penetrating oil on them yet? I didn't. Of course not, man. You're slacking. There we go. There, there it is. Oh. Oh, full of water again. Water huh? <laughs> spilling everywhere. More rust. So we're ready to pull the head then? Yeah. What do you call it? Manpower? Yeah. Oh. Okay, check it out. Oof. Check it out. Wow. Nice cylinder there. Yeah, it check is. Check that out. <laughs> Got a nice stuck valve there in the head. Yeah. Look at that one. Metal head gasket. Nice gasket. One stuck valve. All right. Okay. That would explain why all that water is oh, in there. Oh, it's full of water. Yeah. <laughs> now look how small that engine looks. Yeah, tiny. I know. It's kind of crazy in retrospect how much power you can put out of a little thing like this, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like what limits you can push to little metal things moving up and down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a mess to clean up, don't we? Yeah, you do. <laughs> you made that whole mess. That was no that was nothing to me. You straight up dumped those <laughs> dumped that head sideways. Yeah. Okay. Can we cut? Okay, so we're going to use some slimline tools to get that starter off there. Yeah. Low profile, ratchet and socket. Got the starter. And we have a starter and the wiring. Sweet. We're getting down there. Let's see if we can pry the timing cover off. Sweet. There we go. Timing cover off. So now we have access to the, the oil slinger on the front of the crankshaft. And on a Hemi, we've got three bolts holding the upper timing gear on the camshaft. So we're gonna pull those three screws out and uh, pry the timing chain and gear assembly off there. So on the top of the camshaft is the distributor drive gear, which also drives the oil pump on the side. So I'm gonna pull that out. And the way I like to do that is I use a broad flathead screwdriver and I just twist it out and it picks it right up out of there. And then you can pull it out through the distributor hole. So you can just kind of twist it back and forth and pull it up out of there. So there's the distributor drive gear. It's got a slot in the top of it for the distributor to drop into. It's driven by the camshaft. And then this end drives the oil pump down through the side of the block, this hex-shaped tip. Bottom hanging up. Sweet. Okay, there's our timing gear assembly. Upper and lower gears and the double roller timing chain. Okay, let's see if we can lift this engine off this K-member. Okay, that's good. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna set it down on the floor, unbolt the transmission from the engine. Perfect. Hopefully we can just pull these two right apart. We did it again. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I love it. All there right. We so we got our transmission off the torque converter. And the reason we didn't unbolt the torque converter is because the engine will not roll all the way around. So that's gonna be a challenge for us. Raise this up, pull that torque converter off, and then we'll get an engine stand to put it on. Right there. It's gotta be like, there we go. Sweet. On one thread. Finally. 
torque converter. Wonder if it's any good. Probably not. Probably not. We'll get a new one. It's that lifter. Gotcha. There you go. Good job. There we go. There's another, how many pounds camshaft? Probably 20. 20 pounds? Yeah. It's getting lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Yep. Oh, so good. Oh, that's right. So good, so good. What do they call that, a masterpiece? Here we go. Oh. It's like Christmas. Oh boy. More gook. A oh really God. Crumb, a really crummy Christmas. Really nice. crummy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Let's peel this, be careful. I don't want to get splatted, right? Neither do you. Okay, so here's the windage tray. Must be up in the pistons now. Ugh. Now we're gonna try to get some pistons out of here. You ready, Ezra? Uh, I believe so. The catcher. Okay. Okay. I was a catcher for baseball in middle school. Good, I hope you can catch a Hemi piston. Yeah, we'll see. Two ring. Three ring. There we go. Sweet, we got one. Ready? Yeah. One ring. Nothing? Oh, there we go. Got it. Let's get that oil sump out of the way real quick. Give us some room. Hey, that was pretty easy. Let me screw that real quick. That is a huge, oh, yeah. huge pickup tube. More water, huh? Okay, so now we have more access. So, boy, still don't look too hopeful, does it? Nice. Whoa! Excuse me. Sorry. Whoa! Oh man, man I'm sorry. Language. <laughs> that was bad. You always blame me for that. So we finally got all the pistons out of the Phoenix engine. We have a guy here to pick this up and take it to the machine shop as we speak. I want to thank Ezra for a uh, hard day's work. Thank you, Ezra. Good job, buddy. Got it. Okay, let's roll this baby out to the truck and watch it fly away. The Phoenix engine, right? Pretty sure that's not how that works. No? <laughs> <laughs>